Today we're being joined by Paige Allen from the Sample W West Adelaide side. Paige, thanks for coming on. No worries. Thanks for having me, Cooper. No worries. Happy to have you on. Now, I generally start with the same question all the time, but I'm going to mix this up. I just want to stress this enough that your last name is spelled with an A, not E. And now we're talking off screen about this, that so many people get the spelling spelling variations mixed up. Yes. Yeah, there, there's been many, many of sports photos that mum has had to send back to get reprinted. <laughs> not not fun at all. Now, tell us a bit about yourself. What got you into footy and what type of player you are? Yeah, so um, I've always loved footy. Um, did Oz kick like when I was younger with my little brothers. Um, and then once Oz kick finished up, mum kind of was like, you know, what does everyone want to do? Um, and my little brothers were like, yeah, I want to play footy. And I was like, yeah, I want to play footy. And mum was like, oh, maybe we'll leave footy for the boys. Like you should play netball or something. So I did play netball for about six or seven years. And then, yeah, just didn't have that same passion and love for the game as I do for footy. And, um, yeah, it was one day I'd taken my little brothers to training and I was just kicking the footy with them and a couple of teammates out, out the front of the club. And one of the trainers saw me kicking and he's like, oh, you've got a better leg than half the boys, you should play. And I was like, yeah, no, like I'd love to, but mum doesn't want me to. Um, and yeah. then it ended up being a conversation between him and the club president and then they ended up getting a permit organised for me to play like in the boys' league. Um, yeah. And then I had to sign it and then mum was not very happy with me because she thought that I'd instigated it all. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a... Bit of a rocky start, but no, eventually mum um, jumped on the bandwagon and now she's one of my number one fans. So <laughs> That's good. At least she's converted to being a, a, a person that's approving, approving it now, so that's good. Yeah. Um, so how you got to the Central, obviously started at the Central Districts and moved to West Adelaide, West Adelaide recently. Uh, tell us a bit about that process and to get in the sample as well, Sample W. Yeah, of course. So um, I started as an inaugural player in 2017. Um, and at the time, it was only North, Norwood, West and Glenelg. Um, so at the time, I was zoned to North and I played four years of Sandful out there. Um, and then in my fourth year, we like had a change of coach and a bit of a restructure in the team. Um, so then, yeah, I wasn't really getting the same opportunity anymore. Um, so decided to make the move to Centrals and, yeah, played out there for uh, two seasons. Um, and then a similar thing happened in my second season at Centrals. We got a new coach, a bit of a restructure. They were trying to play me full forward and I'm very much like a winger. I love the run and carry, like a free ball out on the wing. That's, that's a dream come true. So, um, yeah, I kind of lost a lot of passion for the game. Um through that and, yeah, kind of rethought whether or not I should be playing footy or playing Sandful. Um, and, yeah, and then it was um, one of the coaches at Westies that kind of had a conversation with me about, you know, the role that they'd like me to play there if I'd, you know, want to give it a go in another Guernsey. And, um, yeah, I think after having a conversation with a few people at West, um, it really did kind of rebuild that confidence in me again and then being able to go out and do pre-season and stuff like it was just amazing having like people just appreciate the things I was bringing out onto the field and yeah just kind of reignite that that passion again. Yeah. So in 2017 you were the one of the inaugural players that you were in the right had a rising star nomination but 2018 was a pretty impressive year for you. Premiership player, win the competition's most exciting player and make team of the year. Just a solid year. Yeah, no, no, it was it was a very, very exciting year. Um, so, yeah, that was out in the Adelaide Footy League with Salisbury. And um, we'd kind of finished the year, I think we ended up finishing third. So we were like the underdogs coming through the finals that year. And, yeah, it was, um, it was a very, very good year. I think we just had such a tight-knit group. And I think when you've got such a, like, united team and you, you know, attack any team as a unit, it, that's very hard to break through. Um, mm. So, yeah, no, that was, that was definitely a highlight highlight that year. Yeah, then we fast forward to 2019, you a Sanford W Crows exhibition player. How was that opportunity like for you? Yeah, no, that was brilliant. So, yeah, we got to spend a couple of weeks training with some of the Crows players um, and under some of the Crows coaches and S&Cs and stuff. So it was good to kind of get a feel of, um, I guess, part of the AFLW realm and, you know, how that works and, 
things like that. And yeah, no, that that was really cool. Um, being able to use like some of their facilities and stuff, and yeah, just mm. getting on like the difference between you know the expectation at Sample and AFLW. So who were some players back at that time, or even still now, that you keep in contact with that play in the AFLW, particularly from obviously from the Crows and the Power, that have kind of helped you, and especially in that 2019 time? Yeah, yeah. Um, so there was a few players um, back in 2019. Courtney Cramey, she was a big one. Um, so she was also one of our coaches then as well, midfield coach. So, um, yeah, I think just being able to play – under her sort of mentoring and stuff, I think she sees a role for every player. And I know sometimes playing on the wing, um, it can kind of be that outside role that's forgotten about sometimes. But, yeah, I think her her style of game, it was very much, you know, um, being able to use that wing as a weapon in the outlet. And it was just like a different perspective on the game because it was like, you know, a way to get so much more involved in the contest, even though you're not like in and under all the time. Um, so yeah, that that was probably a big one back then. And then yeah, recently having like Hannah Button, who's just, um, aligned with us at Westies, um, yeah. Gemma Hilton, also aligned with us at Westies. So they're two that I bounce off of quite a lot. Um, they're just very like they've got so much humility and they're very like personable players and they're so approachable and it's just, you know, the amount that they want to give back to, you know, um, the sample clubs and the community clubs and stuff. Like it's just, it's so good just being able to like use those resources and yeah, have a chat to them about anything and everything. That's good. So what's it like playing in the sample W and, um, and that experience as you mentioned training with Adelaide for a little bit and then, then obviously playing sample W, how's that journey been for you as well? Yeah, no, so it's it's been a bit of an interesting journey. Um, I think that, like, obviously 2017 to 2019, I probably had quite a big, um, I guess, establishing few seasons and years there. Um, yeah. And then 2020 fell a little bit stagnant, just not being able to get, you know, the same sort of opportunity within Sample. Um, and then, yeah, felt like it was a bit of a rebuild again in 2021, 2022. Um and then obviously, you know, changing clubs again in 2023. So it's been it's been difficult to navigate all of those sorts of like feelings and emotions because it's like a lot of the time you kind of lose that faith within yourself. And you know, it's hard to play at that elite level when you don't have the confidence in yourself as a player. Um, and it's hard to keep, you know, finding that confidence in yourself if you haven't got like the coaches and support staff there to kind of help reignite it from time to time because we all get stuck in our heads and you know drop our heads from time to time so yeah I think um I think every single step that I've made has you know grown me into the player that I am today and I think that you know having the time that I've spent at Westies like it's just really helped me grow into like the person and player that I want to be and yeah definitely feel like I found my home now which is great. Now, casually this year, you were just casually a record holder in the vertical leap. How was that? How did you find out? Did you go for you got that? Got no <laughs> yeah, no. So um, each year we have like sample W fitness testing. Um, and, yeah, so last year obviously took part in all the tests and everything. Um, and then the data gets sent through to the club S&Cs um, shortly after. And, um, yeah, it was just fresh into – 2023, um, just before the season had started, and the SNC posted some of the results. And um, I was, remember looking at my, like, because he initially just posted Westie's results and um, yeah. up, you know, as a club and a team. And yeah, I was kind of, oh, that's really cool. Like, I've never gotten into the 60s before, like 61. I was pretty stoked. Um, yeah. Yeah. He ended up posting a couple of hours later. He's like, actually, um, Paige Allen's actually the Sample W Vertical League record holder. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I was just – I was blown away. It was just, yeah, it was a really cool, I guess, not being a super tall player or anything like that. It's nice to have, you know, something to, I guess, set me apart. That's good. Um, who is some players that you like to watch in the competition in AFLW that you try and model your game off? Yeah, um, I'd say – Probably, so Caitlin Pope at Port Adelaide, um, she's one of the wingers out there um, and has quite a lot of speed behind her, which is very very similar to the, like, weapons and things that I try to use in my style of play. Um, yeah. And then 
other one would probably be Eloise Jones. So she's pretty out at the Crows. Um, quite a lot of speed yeah. behind her. Likes to get on the scoreboard and stuff. So, yeah, I think I very much like to use my, like, attacking weapon more than anything. Um, get back and defend when you need to sort of thing and then, you know, push forward and attack as much as you can. And if I can snag a goal here and there, then I'm, I'm pretty happy. That's good. Who, who did you grow up barracking for? Uh, crows, yes. Crows girl through and through. Now, what was your thoughts on this, the girls in the men's seasons? Oh, the men's season, at, well, and the women's season, actually, they, they were both pretty, um, a bit a bit gut-wrenching. I think the way that the men's season ended was um, yes. pretty upsetting. Um, but yes. I think also there was plenty of opportunities throughout the year for us to have been able to put us in a better position um, leading up to finals. So I think, yeah, with, with the men's, I think we just struggled a lot to kind of finish off the game. It was always that last quarter where we kind of fell short. Um, and it was always like struggling for, you know, points and goals and stuff um, towards the end there. And I think, yeah, the women's season, I think it was, um, yeah, a pretty unfortunate finish. Like they had played the whole season like, as such a united team. And I think it was a season where you could see, like, there was so much camaraderie through the team and stuff. I think they definitely deserve to push a bit further than they did. But at the end of the day, you know, someone's got to pop the loss and that's that's how the season goes sometimes, unfortunately. Now, some interesting facts about you. So you actually, just to clarify for people, because some people do, can get mixed up with this, with, we mentioned before about the spelling variations, but you're not actually related to either of the... Allen girls at the Swan at uh, at the Crows. Yes, no, no, that's right. We we aren't related. Um, we came across each other through like state programs and stuff within Sanford. Um, and we were both, you know, kind of as shocked as each other because we'd never met someone else with, you know, Allen spelt, you know, with the A N. And um, yeah, it just it just happened to be the um, exact same surname and everything, but no no relation at all. So yeah. So obviously Danielle Ponta kicked a good goal to start the year from the Centre Square at Icon Park. Do you recall that and do you feel you'd be able to replicate that or a team that could be able to or thinks they can that can't? Oh, gosh. Um, look, yeah, no, I do I do remember seeing that goal and it was, yeah, bloody bloody impressive. And I think, like, you know, it's um, – I don't think it's an accolade a lot of people could put to their name. Um, we do have a teammate in – our team at Westies, um, she's a former soccer player. Um, and so that's Paris Francis. And she has got to have one of the longest kicks within, like, the sample W for sure. And, um, yeah, I think it's, you know, I, I feel like it's something to do with that hook that soccer players have got in their kick. And, yeah, it's just when she strikes the footy, you just know it's going to fly for, like, days. <laughs> so if there's anyone that could replicate it, it's probably her. Now, you've ha do you have some other fun facts? You're represented state representative for Javelin. You grew up in the country. And yeah. one of the different children, but this next one I find the very, very most interesting of the lot. That there's a few instruments that you play, Paige. Yeah. The saxophone, the piano, and the guitar. Now, later on, is it true that you're going to be trying to perform with one of them? <laughs> oh, I think, um, I think it, you know, if you've got a talent that you know you, you can you can whip out every now and then, then I think you know it's always best to kind of give the people what they want and what they want to see. And um, yeah, no, there there might be a chance for me to do that a little bit later on. <laughs> and uh, a few teammates may be watching to see how well you truly do perform on the saxophone. So we'll get to that potentially very shortly. Um, yeah, where was I? Any outside of footy interest that you have? Um, yeah, no. So pretty strong interest. <laughs> <laughs> in the music um and then yeah other things uh, would be like traveling up into about 10 different countries um and then yeah aside from that i mean footy's kind of life so <laughs> not too much else apart from yeah music and travel and then my little dog winston so yeah nice now what's some nicknames you get because we were talking again off camera about the spelling variations and uh, everything like that. What nicknames do you get that you approve? <laughs> um, one of my favourites and probably the most, like, 
unique and like well thought through nickname was Sticky. So my real name is Vanessa. And so that makes my initials PVA, like PVA glue. So yes, through through state programs, I was called Sticky for quite a while. Um, so yeah, that, that one was quite clever. I liked that one quite a lot. Um, apart from that, like I'll get Palin. So they just chuck on, you know, the first yeah. name, last name. Um, or, you know, PA. It's just quick and simple. Um, but yeah, I suppose because Paige is one syllable, it's kind of hard to like. <laughs> to show yeah. 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 Who who would you say is the coach's pet at West Adelaide? Oh, coach's pet. That's a difficult one. I think <laughs> I think all of our coaches are quite good at keeping that like professional yeah. boundary and professional relationship. I don't I don't think there's anyone that stands out as as okay. a pet. Yeah. Very, very lucky then. Um, who loved yes. the limelight, the attention, the camera at the West Adelaide side and just can't get enough and they know when the camera's on to either over-exaggerate a celebration or anything in particular? Oh, gosh. I think I could not go past Lauren Young. I mean, <laughs> when you've got you know, a rising star and an AFLW draftee within your team, I mean, I think they're kind of they're kind of built for that limelight, you know? And, yeah, she, she's definitely one that doesn't mind, you know, getting behind the camera. <laughs> so you mentioned Loz then. So what do you feel that separates her from any of these draftees really in this draft. Obviously, had she gone through the new um, national or the actual draft, not the pre-season so or pre-draft -sele selection signing, how do you feel? Obviously, she would have been pick one. So how do you feel she separates from the, the entire field? I think um, I think when it comes to Loz, like it's – she genuinely is such a utility on the field. Like wherever you need her to go, she can make that impact. And I think, you know, um, last season we, we played a quite a lot up, at, up, in, a, up in our forward lines. Um, and then, you know, when, when we were hitting points where we were against stronger teams and we were struggling to get it past that midfield, it was like, all right, let's push Loz into the midfield. And then all of a sudden there was impact happening there. So I think it's just, you know, her ability to make impact on contests wherever on the ground. Like it's just – and, yeah, when you've got such a clearing kick and you've got that height to take the mark and, you know, I think it's, yeah, it's hard to get past, you know, if you've got strong fundamentals and then obviously like a good read of the game, that's always going to be a strong player. A lot of other potential draft leagues that I speak to, they I always ask them what their toughest opponent is and in this year's draft crop in particular, and they pretty much all have said Lauren Young, or not every single one because some haven't played on her, but pretty much anyone that's played on her has picked her and it's very reason too. What is your toughest opponent you've ever had to match up in any of the leagues throughout the years that you've had to match up on? Oh, gosh. Um, it probably would be Caitlin Pope. I know that um, – so we played against each other in round two of the sample season just gone, um, and there was a point in time, you know, the ball on the other side of the wing, and I think it was like third quarter or something, and we'd just gone through the contest together. She's tried to come past me, and I've kind of like blocked her off, and, you know, she's kind of turned to me, and she's like, it's really annoying playing on someone that's like – same speed as you because <laughs> I guess you know when you use your speed quite a lot it can get you out of trouble a lot of the time but you know when you when you've got your speed matched it's kind of like it, you just hit a stagnant point you know um so yeah, yeah. that's probably one of the one of the toughest players yeah what's something someone does at the club that you cannot stand whether it's scaring people leaving rubbish around anything like that <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh that is a good one um Oh, look! I think I think we're pretty lucky at Westies. There's not there's not too many girls that are that are super annoying. Nothing jumps out straight away. That's um, good. It's a good thing. Yeah. No. No. Um, it would probably be one of the things would be um, whenever you try to have a conversation with lauren in particular she doesn't have the greatest attention span so it's just like no matter what you're trying to say it's got to be quick in about three or four words otherwise she's it's out. already yeah yeah um, <laughs> but i mean i think i think that happens a lot with you know any younger players it's just sure a thing i think yeah mark or goldie which one would you rather take 
Oh, oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I think um, that's tough. I mean, mark of the year, you know, it's, I feel like mark of the year is a bit more unique, I feel like, because I think, yeah, goal of the year, I guess you could have so many opportunities for goals and it might not be, you know, a goal of the year. But, um, yeah, I think we don't get as much of that, you know, high-flying specky stuff in um, yeah. examples. So I think, yeah, I think mark of the year would definitely be probably a more unique title, yeah. That's fair. Any teammates have been impressed by like that kind of fly under the radar a little bit at the West Adelaide or any in the, any in the competition that you feel should probably get a bit more attention and talk about, even when it's coming about the draft or just in general, um, that doesn't get talked about as much? Yeah, no. Um, I think that we've got so many players that just play their role so well. And I think sometimes yeah. if you're not doing, you know, the speckies or the goals of the year or, you know, um, any of those highlighting sort of plays, um, you do kind of fly under the radar a bit. So, yeah, I think we've got a few, you know, really strong players that are up and coming. Um, we've got Tiana Fernandez in our, in our back lines. She is oh, an absolute weapon. Like, we'll just always find the ball, always find the player, put the pressure on. Like, it's it's incredible watching her play. She's the nicest girl off field. And then as soon as she crosses that white line, it's like, well, oh, I don't want to get in her way. Like, um, yeah, and I think, you know, Ruby Ballard, I think, has, you know, some, it's like, outstanding skills in the forward lines. Just her composure, like, being such a young player as well, just being able to, like, you know, you know, when, when you watch players play and it looks like they have all the time in the world, like I think that just yeah. signifies how much composure they've got. So, yeah. That's good. Now, I generally ask this question lately because it seems to be an interesting topic. It's defenders. Um, obviously, the midfielders, they've got the Brownlow is essentially a midfielders award. I mean, anyone that says it's not, it's they're lying. Um, and then you've got the forwards, you've got their Coleman. And then even Ruckman starts to get, you know, votes in Brownlows and all these other type of voting systems. Do you feel for defenders... There should be an official title for a defenders award. I don't know what you'd call it, but there should be some. Should, you feel there should be something, considering every other position kind of has their own as well. It might be not designed to be their own, but it is. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I like that question. Actually. And I think, yeah, it does raise a pretty good point. Like, you know, there is a bit of limelight for the forwards, with you know, leading goal kicker or goal of the year, and then a bit of limelight for the midfielders because they're kind of in amongst it all the time. And yeah, no, I think. Defenders sometimes do get, you know, sold a bit short because it is a vital role, you know. They're the ones stopping any of the goals and, you know, um, any of those, like, vital passages of play. Sometimes it's like, oh, if you hadn't have stopped that goal, we would have lost the game. And, yeah, I think it's a tough role that they play because a lot of the things that they do are those one percenters in the game. They're not necessarily the highlights of the game, but, you know, it's make or break either way. So, yeah, no, I definitely think there should be um, a bit more, you know, appreciation for, for the defenders and the backliners because they, they, they save the team a lot of the time. <laughs> That's very true. Now, I've got one more question for you before we get to the big reveal. Now, Henry, any advice you'd have for any aspiring boys or girls that want to play in the AFL AFLW competition or play at the, sample, or the, at the state league level to help further their chances to play? And what's your plans also for next season? Um, I guess one of the biggest things that I would preach would just be to, like, make sure you have that passion for the game. Like, it is a huge commitment and it is something that, you know, is a big part of your life. So if anything that you're going to be spending that much time on and energy on, it's got to be something that you love and that you want to do. So, yeah, and you, you'll get so much more out of yourself if, you know, it's where your passion lies as well. Yeah. So what's your plans for next year? Oh, gosh. Um, well, yeah, obviously this season coming, um, it'll be my comeback from ACL. So it's been a pretty rough few months. Um, but, you know, it's at the same time, I think it has been a bit of a blessing in, dis in disguise because, um, you know, you find so many different silver linings throughout the process. And I think you build quite a lot of like mental resilience and like appreciation for things that, you know, you might have taken for granted Um earlier on and yeah, I think my main focus will just be you know getting back out on the field being able to play my 50th sample game and um just like enjoying my footy and yeah playing some good footy again 
it's obviously a very hard thing to go through any form of an injury, particularly a long-term one. The moment it happened and the moment you found out it was an ACL injury, did you, did it ever cross your mind you're like, no, nah, I'm done, or was it more the opposite? That's like, no, I'm coming back, not only to get that milestone, but just in general for a bit of confidence, I suppose. Yeah, no, no. So it was quite heartbreaking. Um, I mean, obviously it's never going to be news that anyone wants to hear. Um, yeah. And it, it happened in the last five minutes of my 49th game. So, like, I was <laughs> very, very close to that um, that milestone game. And, yeah, I think being in the same for so many years, like it has kind of been something that I've been, you know, heading towards. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that, that was probably one of the most heartbreaking things, but at the same time, the biggest motivator. So, you know, there, there's never really been a point in time where I'm like, yeah, no, nah, look, I can't do this. Um, I think one, like the girls and the support staff at Westies have been amazing throughout the whole process, like just mm. overwhelming support. You know, there was parents that had cooked me dinners and stuff to take home, you know, post-surgery so that I didn't have to worry about things like that. And it's just, you know, um, all those little things that, that the club, you know, do to get around you and stuff. And I think, you know, there's never a point in time where I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to do this because yeah. I think in my mind the whole time it's like I want to do it for me, I want to do it for the girls, I want to do it for the support staff, you know, I want to do it for the coaches and, you know, I want to play my 50th game. So I think, you know, um, yeah, as much as it can be super gut-wrenching and heartbreaking at the end of the day, mm -hmm. you know, what would be more heartbreaking is never playing footy again. So, yeah. So besides your first debut game and then this and playing grand finals, outside of that, this probably would be your most important game. So it just makes it even more special that not only is it the 50th game, it's also the comeback game as well. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. No, it's, um, yeah, very, like, nerve-wracking, exciting, like all, all these different emotions bundled into one. And I think, yeah, at the end of the day, you know, when it has been those mornings I get up and it's like, oh, I've got to go to the gym again, I've got to do rehab, like it kind of snaps you out of it really quickly and it's like, oh, hold on, like, you know, the next time I run out on the field, I'm playing my 50th. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, it kind of makes it, um, makes it all worthwhile because it's, you know, it's a very big motivator. Now, there may be some nerves going into that return game, but before all that, now, are we going to perform? Are we, are we signed, sealed and delivered? There's a performance you're going to put on. <laughs> yes, yes, I definitely can. I hope that it's not too deafening because it is a pretty loud instrument. Um, <laughs> but I can I can give it a crack, see how we uh, go. The saxophone, just to confirm. Yes, yes. Anything, so, in, anything in particular? Well, my go-to is normally, it's one of the first tunes I learned, um, and it's yeah. the Pink Panther theme. The what, sorry? Uh, the Pink Panther theme song. Okay, fire away, yeah. there you go. I'm sure the comments will let you know. I'm sure your teammates will see this and see what they have about it as well. Whenever you're ready, fire right. away. This is time someone's done a live performance on the show, so have fire away, Paige. No pressure. All right. <laughs> Good job, Paige. Well done, bravo. Um, now I heard the paparazzi was out here. Yeah, they, they, they were ready for you then, but no, that's um, a very good job, Paige. I really appreciate you coming on. That's short and sharp. Sometimes it's better as well. You, it was very good. I'm sure your teammates will let you know as I'll see this. But uh, really appreciate you coming on. All the best in the recovery. Congratulations on the performance there. And yeah, congratulations on all. Oh, good luck on the comeback trail. And just remember when it is the next game, it's a milestone game as well. So appreciate you coming on. No, thank you so much, Cooper. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Paige.